Hey everyone, Tim Clapham here from hellolux.com with another quick tutorial for Cinema 4D. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at creating um, some kind of organic type using MoGraph and the Metaball object. Um, as you can see in the editor view here, I have um, part of the Lux logo, just the Lux letters, so that we can kind of concentrate on that part. Let's come up to the MoGraph menu, add in a cloner object. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add in um, a sphere by holding down shift. And if we select this sphere, press T, and let's just scale that down. And let's set that sphere to just be, say, six segments. So it's a little bit quicker. If we select our cloner, what I want to do is set the mode to be object. And I'm going to grab my Lux Extrude, and I'm going to drop that into the object slot. And you can see that by default, what happens is um, it distributes those spheres over the vertices of that object. Let's just hide that Lux Extrude, and you can see that we have um, a sphere on every point of that object. If we come down to distribution, we can in fact set that to be volume, which is a little bit more interesting. And let's set up to about a thousand. And you can see it slows down a little bit. And now we have um, all of these spheres filling up the volume of our type. Now we could take this and we could place this into a meta ball and that would give us some kind of globby effect. But I wanna show you a different approach. And rather than using um, polygons, for our metaphor, I just want to use a single point. So let's just switch off our cloner for now and let's delete this sphere. I'm going to add in a polygon object and I'm going to press C to make that editable and switch over to point mode. And you can see now that we have all of these four points that make up our polygon. So I'm actually just going to select three of these and delete them. So now we just have one point left. Just to keep things simple, I am going to um, bring up my coordinates and I'm going to set my X and my Z to zero, hit return, and that will just place that single point at the same point as its axes. We don't really want that to be offset from the axes. Now, if we call this point and drop this into our cloner and then enable our cloner, we now have all of those points distributed um, within our Lux extrude but you can't actually see anything if we switch to point mode you can't see anything because this is a generator so it's generating virtual points and we can't really see them we could press c on our cloner and then we would end up with um, all of these points and you can see now i've got a thousand points and if i select all of them you can see all the points so they're all the points that we we couldn't see before i'm going to undo because um, i don't want them to be actual objects i want to keep the cloner there so I've got the option of adding in effectors I can change the count and the distribution I can change the random seed those kind of things so you just have to kind of trust that they're there and I know that they're there but what we can do now is we can um, hold down alt and come up and let's add a meta ball okay so we've added a meta ball and you can see immediately that we've got this huge um, globule of geometry that's been created from all of those points now the way that a meta ball works when you're using things like points and splines is that it creates a, a metasphere around each point and you can actually control the radius of those metaspheres and you can do that using a meta ball tag. Um, we can also control elements on the meta ball itself such as the hull value and the higher we take this the kind of tighter it will become around our points. So you can see as I increase this up to a thousand we can now almost see our letters for Lux. Let's just undo that. We can also control the uh, subdivision and you want to be a little bit careful with this because if you set it too low and you can see I've gone down to 11 and I don't have any and there you go you can see it took a while to redraw because it suddenly has quite a lot of geometry. So let's set this to say 25 for now. And you can see we also have a render subdivision. Um, so if you want it to look the same in the editor as it does in the render you need those two values to be the same. But for workflow, probably you're going to keep the editor subdivision a little bit higher um, and you just need to make sure you do some test renders um, to the picture viewer so you can see the final quality because it will look considerably different if those values change quite a lot. The other option we have here is exponential fall off um, and this will use an exponential fall off between the metaspheres. So it's kind of a more of an abrupt fall off. Um, and if we enable that, we should see um, a better result straight away in this example. And you can see we now have our kind of meta ball um, reading out the word Lux. 
Um, of course, we've got our editor subdivision at 25, so it does look a bit clunky. You can see all the um, polygons and things there, but there's no reason why you can't take that lower, or an alternative would be to, um, you know, use subdivision surfaces, drop that into a hypernerbs, um, and, and there we go. I'm going to undo that because I'm just going to stick with just the meta ball for now. So I mentioned a moment ago about the uh, meta ball tag. If we take our point object that we have here and let's choose tags, Cinema 4D tags and add on a meta ball tag. On the tag itself, we have negative influence, strength and radius. Now, you can use negative influence if you have that on certain objects or points and you can use that to kind of push into the meta ball to take it parts away. To, to almost like make it smaller. Not really make it smaller, but to um, you can use it to shape negative areas. We have a strength parameter. If you leave that at 100%, that means that the hull itself will be the same as the meta ball generates. But if you increase and decrease that, then you will um, increase the hull value and decrease the hull value. So we could um, increase this here. And you can see it has a similar effect to adjusting the whole value. But because it's on a tag, you can have several objects in here. So you can have different objects with different whole values, which means that you can kind of create detail or remove detail from different areas of the meta ball. Finally, we have the radius parameter. And the radius parameter refers to the metasphere that I mentioned before. And the metasphere is a virtual sphere that's created around the point itself. So if we set this to say 10 you can see now that the uh, metaspheres themselves are a half the size so what we could do is we could take several of these point objects and put them in our cloner and we can um, kind of randomize the size of them so it means some of the metaball spheres will be larger and some of them will be smaller Now the thing with MoGraph is it's a little bit clever in that we could actually interpolate between those sizes um, and we can set our cloner to blend mode and that would allow us to do that. Let me just create a new scene and what I'm going to do is add in a sphere and then I'm going to um, add in another sphere and this one I'm going to set to be 5 and this one I'm going to leave at 100 and if we add in a cloner and drop both of these in and let's set the um, Y to say 100. Let's have a look. And let's increase the count. Okay, so you can see there's our little tiny sphere and there's our large sphere. And at the moment it's set to iterate between those. But if we set this to blend, you can see that what happens is, um, depending on the count that you have, it blends between those parameters. So it's blending between the 5 radius and the 100 radius. And you can do this with any of the parameters. We could set this to be 6. And we can set the other one to be 24 and we'd see that as well um, you can see here there um, are less segments and as we move up we end up with a lot more segments and that's exactly what we want to do with our points and the reason i'm just showing it with spheres is because we can't really see it with our points the other thing that we can do is we can add in an effector so if i choose MoGraph effector and add a random effector Rather than have random position, let's scroll down and let's choose random modify clone. Let's pull this over. And if I choose random modify clone, you can see that it randomizes how that blend is distributed. We can also adjust the seed. And you can see now we're kind of getting random sized spheres. And that's the kind of theory that we're going to use on our meta ball. So let's just close this down. I'm not going to save this. Let's take this point and let's just duplicate it to create another one. I'm going to select the meta ball tag here and set the radius on this to be 50. Okay, and maybe let's set that to be 30. And this one is set to 10 and this one is 30. Let's set this one to say 5. And if we come to our cloner object and we set this to be blend, now that what will happen is it will blend between those two different values. If we grab our meta ball and let's set the whole value to say 300. And let's set our editor subdivision down to say 15. Now if we render, you can see that we're actually getting um, some larger parts on our meta ball and we're getting some smaller parts. If we take our cloner, choose MoGraph effector. And let's add in a random effector uncheck position 
I'm just going to select this meta ball and set this back up to say 30 just so it's a little bit quicker. Now on the random effector we need to set our modify clone to be say 100. Okay and now you can see that we're actually getting gaps in here so perhaps this whole value is a bit too high so I'm going to take this down. And of course if you don't want to reduce the whole value you want it to be quite tight you can leave that say at 250 but you're going to need to maybe double the amount of points in there so increase the count on your cloner and you can see the effect that we're having now the other thing that maybe is quite interesting is you can grab your random effector instead of using random random mode random set that to something like noise Now noise is animated, so if we press play, what will happen is um, we should see the whole thing kind of evolving. Now it's going to be a little bit slow and jerky because we have got 2,000 points in there and we're generating this meta ball. So let's just press stop, rewind. I'm going to check these. I'm going to set that back up to 10. I think 5 is maybe a bit too small. And let's set that to be, say, 40. And let's set the meta ball hull value to say 150. Okay, and now as we scrub to different points in the animation, you can see that the whole thing is kind of evolving. And if I just set my meta ball editor subdivision to say 60, so everything happens at a lot lower resolution, now we can press play and you can see that the random effector is randomizing those values of the metaball tag so the metasphere itself is changing radius and as it does so we're kind of creating this organic undulating text that looks pretty ropey at this editor subdivision but if we set this down to five and hit render and have a look it's going to take a little bit of time to calculate all that geometry won't take too long um, and we should see a lot more detail in our mesh Okay, there we go, and you can see that that rendered in just over, well, 36 seconds, so, um, you know, didn't take too long. Obviously, we haven't got any shaders or lights or anything in there. It takes a fair amount of time, but we have got a very smooth mesh. We could probably get away with increasing that subdivision, maybe to like 7 or 8, and that will make the render times faster. But what you can see here is that we do have these kind of larger areas of the meta ball here, and then here we've got like much finer detail. So it's you're getting a more of an organic, unusual look to the, the meta ball itself rather than that even regular globiness that we all know meta balls look like. So it's just looking a little bit more interesting. So I hope you enjoyed that tip and that gives you some idea of um, alternative ways to use things like MoGraph and meta balls. Um, if you add in a few lights and maybe some interesting materials, then you could possibly um, end up with a result like this.